Hi, this is Matt from tracingmat.co.uk and here I have the Sanyo Zacti HD 1010. This is actually a bit of a revisit this video because we've had quite a few questions about the 1010. It seems to be quite a popular model with uh, a lot of you out there um, and we've had some questions about the quality of the video and also the menu structure. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you a little bit more of the menu structure on the camera itself and I've also shot some sample footage for you to take a look at which we're going to attach on the end of this video itself. Um, so just a quick look round as a recap on the Zacti. We do have a 10 times optical zoom and 100 times digital. We have our swing out screen at the side which is quite high res, is quite good. Um, I've been using the HD 1000, exactly the same sort of setup here. Uh, isn't touch screen, you have a normal and a Simple shooting mode, mostly I'm shooting in normal and a little loudspeaker here so you can actually hear the audio prompts as well as uh, listen to your audio playback. Power button on the side, our SDHC card goes in here, we'll see the controls are on the back for zoom and different uh, settings. Eyelet for putting the lens cap, connecting the lens cap so you don't lose it. Button for popping up the flash which only works in stills, uh, it's not a uh, light for moving video. Uh, there's a little quarter inch screw thread on the bottom for connecting to a tripod and then we've got a little connector there which is where we use it for putting it into the docking station for charging and obviously synchronizing downloading the files and things like that to the PC. So very, that's obviously a very quick look around the camera and uh, let's have a look through the menu structure. There's some things that I really do like about the Zacti range and particularly uh, the 1000 and the 1010 that I've been using. Um, certainly I do like the fact that we have in here uh, the white balance modes and we can use also white balance and we can also set a one push white balance so I have obviously a white background here and when I'm doing unboxing videos and everything else then I would just set one push white balance and that would set my white balance there which is particularly useful particularly with unboxing um, as we're moving different uh, things in and out of the shop we're finding that uh, using auto white balance on any camera will actually change the white balance throughout the, uh, throughout the presentation, throughout the shots um, so you actually get different colouring throughout the video itself so if we set it to manual white balance and we actually set the white background we'll get a consistent white balance throughout the, uh, throughout the video so I've actually found that to be really quite good and uh, we can also go into um, various other modes, we've got exposure control again very useful face chaser uh, which is great for it will actually use AF around a face inside the shot so that uh, you know you always got people uh, in focus rather than backgrounds or closer or other objects in focus we've got a photo wide mode high sensitivity mode and a digital zoom uh, these are all very similar to the HD 1000 the only difference here is the photo wide mode uh, we have clock set, info set, startup display, post view, record fold, all those sorts of things, all pretty standard setup to do with where you're actually recording and how you're recording. There is a shortcuts menu, which is great if you're actually using the camera rather than going into the menu, you can set the joystick to do specific things rather than going through the menu in order to find those items, which is great. There's noise reduction, image settings, flicker reduction, brightness control, and external microphone volume because on here we do actually have the ability to plug in an external microphone. So it's one of the few compact cameras, and certainly the HD compacts that we've seen, that has the ability to plug in an external camera. There are quite a lot on the market that don't, so that's quite useful. Uh, moving down we have this ability to change language, the TV output into PAL and HDMI modes and different things like that. Power saving mode, file formatting, formatting of the memory card, all pretty standard stuff. Where it does actually change, actually, right, I'll just actually flip around to the top, is we've got different movie modes. So we can shoot Full HD 1080i and Full HD 1080p. We can also shoot 720i, 720p, and then we've got TV mode 644A T, uh, 30 frames and 60 frames per second. And then we have this Web SHR mode, which is 448 by 336, and we can shoot at 300 frames a second. Now lots of people have asked questions about this 300 frames per second mode. So again, I've got a sample video for you here. So 
So that video is actually quite impressive. Okay, you can only record at 448 by 336, but it's still quite cool at giving you a slow motion mode. We've also got a standard 320 by 240 shooting mode, and we can record just voice memos. Mostly I'm shooting at 720p, because that's more than sufficient for the videos that I'm doing on the web, and, and certainly for home use. I'm not really worried about going to 1080i or 1080p, partly because it takes up too much room on the memory card, uh, and also it makes processing of the video that bit more difficult, takes up that much more memory. Uh, 720p is more than adequate for more, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. We have different photo modes. We can go to 8 megapixels, 4, and then we'll see different shooting modes down there. That we can choose depending on the recording we want to do. What is really nice about the Zaxi range from Sanyo, and I think it's the same across the whole range, is that you can actually record stills at the same time as recording video, and it doesn't interrupt the video recording at all. There's no, you don't even see it on the video playback, uh, which is great. So if you actually want to take a still in the middle of taking a recording, you just press the still button and it will take a still shot. I think that's an excellent idea. Got different C modes, different filter modes. Flash is obviously turned off at the moment, but I can turn that into auto. Uh, self timer, again, very useful for doing stills. We've got a movie and photo stabilizing mode which uh, I also demonstrate in one of the videos that uh, I've recorded for you. I've actually turned it on so you can see how much difference it makes. And I think it makes a great deal of difference to be honest with you, but it is there. We also have different focus modes, exposure modes and ISO settings, um, all of which I've pretty much set as standard and auto. And then finally we're obviously back to the different recording and exposure modes. So that's a quick tour of the menu and the camera itself and I hope you enjoy and find the uh, sample videos here useful and uh, I'll be back with a more detailed review, written review on site on tracymac.co.uk very soon. Okay, in this sample clip here we're shooting in very low lighting conditions and as you can see the image is fairly noisy. It's not terrible, I have seen worse, but there is a certain amount of noise and grain there. That is to be expected though because it is quite dark here and obviously the gain has been turned up on the CMOS sensor and the result is to get this amount of noise. Uh, it's not terrible, um, but uh, it's not pretty either.